Well, good morning. Breakfast with the Broker every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. I have the amazing, unbelievable, incredible Sue Toriello here. Um, thank you very much for joining You're us. Thanks we for forgot our Hi, hi. Oh. Well, good morning, and, and, good morning. And, and to all you know our viewers. You know, listen. We've uh, we've crossed paths quite a lot o over over the years, and um, I've uh, admired you from a, somewhat of a distance. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> and back in 2000, when you uh, when you really started your company, uh, Torio and Company, and um, you really built a pretty good culture. Um, you know, you came from New Jersey, is that correct? Yes, I grew up in Florida, moved to Jersey, had a large company there, okay. and sold half to my partner and came back to Florida and started this. And uh, was a real estate company up in New Jersey? Or yes, yeah, yeah. yes, it was at the Jersey Shore area, five offices, 104 agents. Wow. And it just came time to sell and get back to Florida. When I got back, I felt like my feet were really on the ground. That's I belong great. here, so. And I mean, in 2000, I mean, you really kind of, um, really built this amazing culture in your office and, and, you. and um, obviously a great brand in, in Delray and um, you became well known, you know, uh, especially with some of the luxury property as, as well. Um, tell us a little bit about how you built your culture in Toriello and Company. Okay, great. I started out when I came to Delray, I joined um, JC De Niro on the other side of the bridge and that was great. It was about a year and a half and I was used to owning a company, so, and I had two daughters at the time in the business. Later, my son-in-law uh, joined us. And I said, you know, let's, let's start this. We had four agents here. The secretary became another agent that made five. We built it to 24 agents. Um, we were a family, family-owned real estate company. My husband uh, ran the IT department and the escrow and bookkeeping, et cetera. And we had a great time. We had IT back in 2000? Yeah, well, we didn't call it that. I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> I'm, just kidding. That. I'm just kidding. Because we always had IT, but people were like, oh, no. We, we, yeah, you know, we, did, we called it the computer man, as a matter of fact. <laughs> that was his email address. <laughs> so we had, we had a great time. We had a great run, um, you know, 16 and a half years. And then it came time to grow a little more. Sure. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure over the years you were uh, presented with offers and things to merge or, or um, do you want to sell? You know, when do you know when the right time is either to sell, merge, acquire? Oh, I, I didn't know that I wanted to until I started talking to Douglas Elm and I was unsure. Um, I hadn't talked to anyone else and I didn't. Um, I got a lot of calls. A lot of calls. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we talked or something about, you know, doing the Remax thing. Mm -hmm. But I just wasn't interested. And then I looked around and I saw that Tariello and Company couldn't produce the marketing, the reach, both the internet and the national and international reach that the other big companies had. Um, I wasn't interested in shopping around. I really didn't want to do that, you know. I wanted to find a company that I admired and thought could be a fit. And I watched Douglas Elliman for quite a while. And then we started talking. It took a year and three months. So one of us was stubborn. I don't know which one. One of us. <laughs> I, I wonder who. It might have been the person on my left, but I'm not no, sure. <laughs> maybe. But we did negotiate, and I knew that um, it probably would happen because you got, when you own a company and you sell it, it wasn't a merger, it was an acquisition, um, you have salespeople, and you have a reputation in town and you want to preserve that and the company that buys you it's very important that they continue to be more successful than you were actually or why would you do this so i had 24 salespeople. so you know you had to negotiate things for them sure. not just for me uh, so that's what happened and what, what so what advice would you give to perhaps an independent firm that uh has been approached uh looking at uh, their different options as to you know 
do you really want to, you know, get in a, uh, an acquisition where you're selling or, you know, I mean, I, I know as far as the marketing was attractive to, with yeah. Douglas Elliman, I guess you really have to look at your culture and you have to look at what brand aligns yourself uh, well. That's uh, exactly with, yeah. correct. Yeah. And, and what else uh, would you give advice for someone who's just thinking about, um, you know, in the, in the kind of s slow stages, you know, a year okay. and three months previous? Right, right. Well, I think that you have to be very discreet, very confidential. Oh, they're always. Oh, by the way, we're in downtown Delray, where right. there's always construction. construction. <laughs> always we're not even close to Atlanta Crossing. No, no. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but, but I think if a broker is thinking, us, an independent broker like I was, at one time we had um, three offices here, came back to just Delray. We were further north, et cetera. And I wanted to just build Delray to the best, which is what we did. I think you look around, and like you said, you look at other companies, you can't talk, in my opinion, to three or four companies at the same time. First of all, the word gets out, your agents get scared, they'll run. You know, well, who's coming in? We don't know, we heard rumors, we heard this, we heard that. Um, and even though it took a year and three months, we kept it pretty much under uh, our hats that that we were doing this and I also think that I just needed the weight off my shoulders I had carried that weight the company I ran up north uh, was big I was president of the board I was grievance I was professional standards I was an alternate state mediator and when I came to Florida I felt like you know what, I, I want to wear some flip-flops for a while. <laughs> and you, can, you actually can do that here, even with your customers, especially in this location. Um, I don't dress like my customers, but I, you know, I'm not like I had to be up there either. This is pretty dressed up for me today. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I have an agent, um, Kevin West, who he, uh, he wears shorts. And, oh, yeah. and he sells two million, you know, million dollar, two million dollar yeah. deals, and and you know, and it's funny because you know it goes back to the culture thing, right? So right. you know, originally, you know, I'm I'm from the old school, you know, like listen, you you need to be dressed professionally, and you need to this, yeah. and you know, and I even made a um, a uh, like you know a policy, like listen, you never come in with well, this, and yeah. <clears throat> and then Kevin changed that because Kevin, you sells. know, there was a couple other, I don't know if you remember Rob DeCaro. Uh, a long time ago, but he also had the same thing would sell in a multi million dollar properties and he would wear shorts. And the interesting thing is, is you know, a lot of customers are attracted to that. There are customers that are that not attracted, right. but you're attracting the people that you want to deal with. Right. So, really, if you say consistent to your, you know, your culture and your brand, that's right. that's a good idea. Well, I think that you're the one working, the agent is the professional, the one working. They're on vacation. A lot of times here, they're on vacation or, you know, it's just more casual at the beach. So um, my flip-flops are fancy. I mean, <laughs> they've got gold and silver on them. Well, so. then, nowadays, you know, flip-flops could be a lot more expensive than boots. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's a great atmosphere here. You know, when I sold, I thought, oh, the day I drive up and see the sign changed, it's gonna it's gonna affect me i didn't know how i would feel i drove up i saw the sign and this big weight went off my shoulders and i liked it and i was proud that they chose me i still i'm very proud that Elliman chose me and continued the negotiations for as long as we did because they're an amazing firm and i do enjoy being a broker agent now I do get to travel a little more. I partnered up with one of my daughters, Susan Ring, uh, a year ago, and that's worked out real well. So I do get to go to, we have a house in Beach Mountain, North Carolina, oh, that nice. we go up there in the summer. So we enjoy life a little more. Sure. And I also have another daughter, Sharon Merrick, and Eric Ring, <laughs> the whole family. Yeah. I have to mention them, Not no relation to Bruce. Uh, <laughs> so everyone says you don't that. walk on water. <laughs> He's bigger than water. I love Bruce. Though. We get along. He's great. No, no, and, and I do think something um, to put out there to agents like David and I can sit here and talk 
I know a lot of brokers and I really enjoy the fact that I can call up a broker and talk to them. You know, at not all this, well, you're against me, I'm against you, blah, blah, blah. I've negotiated and mediated a lot of issues with contracts and agent to agent, etc. And there's no reason to fight. There's no reason. And, you know, it, it, it's not rocket science, <laughs> real estate. It's not. But you do have to have... You know, oh, you, do, right there. you do have to have the brain. The landscapers are right behind me, but it'll look nice when they're done. It, it does. <laughs> you know, you, you need to have professionalism, and my, my slogan was matching people with properties. And then there are these sayings, listers last and buyers are liars, because what buyers tell you, they usually don't buy. So you just kind of work it as a realtor and try to match that person because they don't always know what they want. Somebody will come look at a flyer in this window um, and they think, oh, we want to live in Delray, and they see the flyer and it's a million one for this little tiny house, or a condo even now, and they can't do that, but they want that quality of a property, of a house or condo. So you may have to take them over the bridge. Yeah, no, you, and you, and you said something interesting, you know, we have all these sayings with, you know, like you said, buyers are liars. And yeah. I think that was an old school <laughs> that saying. That was really old. You know, when you, when you look at it, it really wasn't that buyers were liars. It was that buyers didn't necessarily have all the information available. Right. And they didn't right. have a point of reference. So when, you know, when people say that buyers are liars, it's because that a buyer will say, hey, I want a three-bedroom, two-bath, single-family home near the water, and then they buy a one-bedroom, one-bath condo. Right. It's like, right. how'd you get to that point? Because they weren't educated on yeah, the market. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and a realtor, you know, the biggest thing that a realtor can do for you is to educate you on the market, right. um, navigate you through the obstacles, and if you do have a relationship with brokers and agents, you're cooperating and collaborating at a high level. So yes. you're not, yeah. you're not, you know, we're face to face. I could call you up and say, listen, I know you have your listing on 123 Appleby Street, you know, um, how we look in, you know, you know, where we're at kind of thing. And we're going to work together mm -hmm. to try and get exactly. the deal done. And because ultimately, what does the seller want? They want to sell it. They want to sell it. And the buyer wants to buy the property. Right. So, right. you know, um, that's the great thing where, you know, I think we have a pretty, you know, the Boca Del Rey um, market, I think is a very close knit market I with um, agents and it's you know um, we you have know, some amazing agents oh, amazing. in our area amazing. you know not just within our own two companies Agreed. but I, I you know I love I love calling the other agents and talking to them about their listings go see them etc yeah I mean I um, we worked at a you know I mean I, I met Ingrid uh, last year mm -hmm. and uh, Ingrid Carlos who's the uh, so manager I'm broker at Douglas Elliman there's landscaping. They're gonna leave, I promise. The um, <laughs> it's funny, but uh, I met. The lighting is great, though. The lighting is great, <laughs> and you look great. So yeah, it's perfect. So, <laughs> so Ingrid Carlos, um, I, I met um, last year as the managing broker, Doug yes. Solomon, and uh, you know we had a, an issue that arose with one of our agents or whatever, and you know I called her up and we spoke about it and we resolved it, so it wasn't an issue. You know, had I not had that relationship, had I not had That's that face-to-face, right. -face, and Ingrid call on me if there's an issue. So, you know, that's that's the important thing right. that, you know, the reasons why we do these kind of things with collaboration and perpetuating professionalism right. is exactly uh, what And we're Ingrid doing. is that type of manager. Sure. And not replacing me, but if I had to choose someone to come in and take over the company, or if I had to hire a manager, when I was still Tariello and Company, she's the perfect match for our company here, our Douglas Elliman Delray. So it works. Let's talk about the market. How's the market? The market. <laughs> oh God! I knew you were going to say that. Well, the mar the fourth quarter Elliman report just came out, and in for Delray Beach, and it says the condo prices are up thirteen and a half percent. Uh, condo sales up 16.3 and the houses, uh, single family homes Delray are up 1.6% the price, sales 6.2. And I think this is because, and this is the 
fourth quarter of 2019. Because we're going into October, November, December, we're going into uh, the season where the people want to buy and close. They want to close for Thanksgiving and the holidays. So I think that's, that's the reason why it's up, but it is a robust market. Sure. You know, the buyers, you get all kinds of buyers. You get easy ones, you get difficult ones. It all depends, you know, what you're working with. And you have to be able to work with any, any of them. They want to buy a home, you sell homes. They want to buy a condo. I mean, the condo market, I love the condo market, quite honestly, especially down on the Strip. You know, there are a million, two million. We just got a listing in-house here for 3.2 million. Um, a top deck, double, double condo. So it's not only about the single family homes um, in our area. They walk in, they want walk to the beach, walk to town. There are only so many homes. That's why that keeps going up. There is a little, little bit of a um, protected bubble here as far as pricing, in my opinion. Yeah, so. I mean, when you look at the, uh, you know, people start uh, talking about recessions and well, you know, I remember 2008 and what yeah, happened, yeah. And, you know, the crash and all these different things. You know, the interesting thing is, is we got a couple, couple factors that th we didn't have back then. First mm -hmm. of all, there's significant equity in right. uh, people's homes. Um, I think the stat came out that there was like 30% of all uh, single family homes in the nation were owned um, free and clear. Um, and then 30%, 30, that's great. It was something like 30%, Good. 28, somewhere on there. Mm -hmm. And then it, they also put a percentage of, they said, I think it was like 55 or 60% of all single family homes had a uh, interest rate of 3.75 or, or lower. Wow. So, you know, when you're looking at all these different oh, things, yeah. it's like, you know, could, I mean, could there be a correction? Absolutely. Um, single family homes seem relatively flat, yeah. you know, um, condo sales, you know, they're definitely up, but it's, it's more of, I think the, the buyer's mindsets have changed. You know, we call it HGTV conditioned or what have you, but if you have a contemporary or modern interior finishings in a home, that are quality because mm. people aren't looking at for IKEA kind no, of and they love and they love new construction. Oh yeah, they love buyers they, they, love that, and they'll pay a significant premium mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that's I think what we're looking for. Um, you know, in, in 2020, it looks like a, a you know still pretty robust. Um, it's year. good. I think it's at an all time high, like yeah. the stock market. And people get nervous at an all-time high when they hear those words. But we've said that many times before, haven't we? Sure, we said it last you know, year. So who, who knows what the all-time high is? Maybe we haven't reached it yet. Well, they talk about a 10-year cycle, right? So right. in 2018, that 10 year, and everyone said oh, it's going right. to be a recession. 2019, oh no, we're going to recession. Now 2020, we're going to, you know, and, and none of the factors, when you look at all the chief economists, right. Right. Are saying that it's a recession yeah, in 2020 now. You know, you know it is an election year, so you you never know what happens. You know, sometimes there's uncertainty, you know, in and around the election. But and um, even if there's recession, whatever, I worked when interest rates went up to 21 percent, and then the banks, the nor the savings and loans at that time closed to mortgages sure. for about nine to 12 months, and we had to do seller financing. We still made a living. It's like the bird that sits on the branch. He's not afraid the branch will break because he can fly. Right. You can still sell houses <laughs> no matter what well, happens. People well, move. Well, I mean, yeah. if, if you look at it, there's 195,000 realtors um, wow. in the state of Florida. Well, that's another yeah. thing. Yeah. Yes, to me, yeah. I really so, think there should be a quota. Yeah. <laughs> they, I think they should have to sell five homes per year. Otherwise, they go into inactive. They still have to pay fees. <laughs> right. Well, we, we, you want to hear a, a funny stat? Is uh, I don't know if it's that funny, but uh, oh. there's, a, there's a million for um, uh, real, licensed realtors for the National Association of Realtors in the country. Oh wow! So there's 1.4 million. Wow. Of those 1.4 million, 45 percent of them don't do a single transaction oh, in a yeah. year. Oh yeah. And 66 percent of all realtors in the nation of that 1.4 do three or less transactions oh, in a year. That's terrible. Yeah, and so, it's it's always been said, 20% of the 
Realtors do 80% of the business. Yeah, and I think, it, I think it's even 1090 now. You know, I mean, I think it's, you know, 90-10 where 10% of the uh, realtor, right, realtors probably. do 90% of the business. Especially in this area. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. So let's talk about, um, you know, um, what are you seeing uh, as far as disruptors? Is there anything in the market that you think um, that is uh, maybe challenging in 2020 2021? Oh, I just think whatever comes our way, we handle it. You know, I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, we, we had Zillow come in. Realtor.com, this is how old I am. My husband and I both worked on the Realtor.com um, birth, actually. In uh, New Jersey, we, there was a national committee out of Jersey and New York. We weren't on the committee, but we worked on our board on it. And Realtor.com almost went bankrupt. And the realtors are like, oh no, we don't want Realtor.com. You know, then people just go on the internet and they'll call anybody. You know how much Realtor.com, how much business it brings us? It is so good. I'll take a buyer any day that has been on Realtor.com and looked at eight or 10 homes before I meet them. I like that, sure. you know? So I think whatever comes, we'll handle it. I don't see there never being a need for a service of a real estate person, a live person. And I've sold houses and condos without them ever seeing it. Sure. I've listed properties, especially down on the Strip, where send the listing, e-sign, they sign it. I never even met the sellers, but they've gotten my cards or knew me from somewhere to call me to list it. What are you thinking can come our way that would be a disruptor? So, uh, oh, turning the table. You. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, you must know. You must have asked other people. You know, I have. The, the only asked him. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, ser the service, you know, we're in a service industry. Absolutely. And, you know, people pay for service. You know, why do people go to the Ritz Carlton or the Mandarin Oriental, you know, uh, for a hotel when the Hyatt Place or uh, Marriott Courtyard does the same thing, gives mm -hmm. you a bed or whatever? You know, it, it, it's because of service. Because when you walk through the door, you are, um, you're greeted with, you know, a smiling face and, right, and, right. And, and a live person someone who's right. educated about the project in the area <clears throat> and the community around so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know as far as the value of a realtor I think what I, I think this is a the Zillow's and the realtor.com's and all these different portals and the red fins and all this other different things mm -hmm. um, that have entered into our market has actually helped not only the consumer but it's also helped the realtor because it's put it's put almost like a wake up call to the realtor like stop doing what you're doing and create value to the consumer you're right because the consumer has choices right. they have choices and and i believe that um the consumer should always be in control and a realtor should always think that they need to vie for the business because they're going to educate they need to have knowledge and expertise in the area um, and community. And it doesn't mean that you had to sell hundreds of homes in that particular area. But if you're entrenched in a community or you're entrenched in an area, uh, you know, that, that holds a lot of weight. Yes. You know, how is, you know, what artificial intelligence and, you know, and, and all these different automated uh, valuations and what have you, how are they going to tell you that the principal for a particular school left from one school to the next mm -hmm. and this principal wasn't as great or how, you know the teachers are are in, in a particular school um you know had an issue you know in, in a school or in a community you know um they're building a a multi a plex project that's going to you know bring up values or the bright line right. you know, how are they going to do that they're not going to they be don't. able to value the same things that we do because we, we know the community right so you know right. our consumers going to have more choices absolutely mm -hmm. uh you know and and quite honestly you know when you look at commissions you look at real estate commissions and, and such i just think that you know 
you get what you pay for in many cases. Exactly, my and, thoughts. And right. the value you that work. you give. Yeah. You know, stick to stick to whatever your whatever you believe as a realtor or broker, um, you're worth, and make sure that you present that value as to why you should be paid X amount of dollars versus right. a flat fee company who isn't. Right. You know, why do realtors change offices, right? You, you know, if you look at a realtor's office, and I say this all the time, 100% flat fee companies, right? If there were, I mean, there were very few top producers at 100% flat fee companies. If all that mattered was the money, the money no. it would all be there. Right. You right. know, you would be there. I'd be there. We'd all right. be there. Right. No, you're, you're exactly right. And I believe if you wake up in the morning as a realtor, you can do this. You just have to put in the effort. You go, you, you make the calls, you, you care about the client. That's the big thing. As long as you care about the client, whether it be a buyer or seller, I hope I didn't turn myself off. But anyway, whether you're a buyer or seller, whether you're working with, it doesn't matter which one. You have to care about them and you have to kind of put your mind in their mindset. You're not buying this house, they are. Of course. You know, I found myself saying, oh, I don't like this house. Who cares? I'm not buying it. I'm not living there. <laughs> it, no. It's what's That's right for them. Too. It's what's right for them. It, it is. And, and, and you got to put your, it. you got to, exactly, yes. Rebecca. Yes. You got to take the emotion Learned out of the transaction. Over three years, oh, man. yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, I mean, the, the emotion, the, the reason why buyers and sellers hire you are to take the emotion out of that transaction. Right. And, the, right. and then navigate through those obstacles. And it's much more difficult when it's an emotional transaction to navigate mm -hmm. than it is when it isn't. So, okay. um, so thank you very much. You're let's, welcome. let's last, we'll, we'll leave on this note. So what do we not know about Sue Toriello? Oh, geez. That, <laughs> that we, that you can't I, I'll leave you with a smile, I hope. Um, I was on the chamber board like 12 years and one year we had a retreat and it was an all day retreat and they said, Tell us three things, each person, that we don't know about you. But make one not be true, so we can guess which one is oh, true. Funny. So I'm going to tell you three things about me that you probably don't know. That I was uh, brought up in Florida, lived in New Jersey after, and came back to Florida. That's one thing. Uh, the second thing was that I ride a motorcycle. The third thing was, and I'm not proud of this, but in college I was very poor. I paid my own way, and I did pole dancing on the weekends. <laughs> so, I say number three is not real. Which one do you think is not real? Well, we know one's real. I'll say, I'll probably say three as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, the couple people on the board said you don't ride a motorcycle. Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I love That's my motorcycle. Good. So anyway, uh, thank you for asking me. I was oh, honored. This is, this is, a little nervous, but honored. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean you you were you were great. Okay. And, and I, I have a broker open today oh, well, from twelve to two at where? Seagate Towers, tenth okay. um, floor condo, eight sixty five. Asking, please come see me. I'm having lunch. Absolutely, realtors love lunch. They love. I know that's there. why I serve. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Sue. You. Uh, a pl absolute pleasure. And, uh, you know, I, I wish you nothing but the success in, in 2020. Too. And uh, Breakfast with the Broker every Tuesday not at night. Oh, Why not next week? Why not next week? Maybe next week you're going to Miami on Friday for Ed. Oh. oh. <laughs> so next week, that's right. <laughs> you want me to do it for you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, next week uh, we are not um, going to be on Breakfast with the Broker. Tuesday, but we will be on Friday. Yeah. Um, uh, we're gonna go live at like three thirty. Is that yeah. correct? Three thirty. Uh, Ed Stulik. Stulik, who is socialite uh, partner. What's that? A socialite partner. Socialite partner, a um, Instagram influencer, um, all kinds of different things. So he's a uh, he's <clears throat> he's phenomenal. You may have seen him around uh, uh, all the social media channels. He's a uh, very very popular. So uh, we look forward to on Friday at three thirty down in South Beach. So thanks so much, guys. We will see thanks. you next week. Bye. Bye. Have a great weekend. Week. Oh, oh.